Hey y'all, Jonathan and Larry here. We wanted to talk to you about the scary movie that just came out this past weekend called The Turning. When Larry and I saw this film in theaters and the credits started rolling, we both looked at each other with puzzled looks on our faces. Everyone else in the theater was also like, huh? What just happened? So on our car ride home and for a while after, we both speculated as to what we could have possibly missed in this film. And the more we thought about it, the more we realized how brilliant of a film it was. And here's why. Number one, it tricks you into thinking it's a plot-based film, but it's really not. Number two, we never really know what's real. And number three, nothing makes sense until you really break it down. Our first conversation about this film was whether or not it was a plot-based film. A plot-based film is a movie that focuses on the story. The characters need to get from point A to point B in order to complete the story, and sometimes they get into trouble on the way there. The Conjuring is a good example of a plot-based horror film. Why is this happening to us? It can't be me. It must be my surroundings. How are we going to fix this? Oh, we need an expert who knows about paranormal stuff, and somehow we need to get them to come here. Okay, cool. We deliver the spirit out of our mom, and everything is good now. That is a plot-based film. On the other hand, a film could be character-based. The Babadook is a good example of a character-based film where a few characters experience something and an internal conflict is resolved, which solves their external circumstances. We realized that The Turning isn't a story about the experience of a governess who goes to live with creepy kids at a mansion. It's about the governess herself. Once we realized this, a lot of other things started to come together. But before we continue, you gotta know that we're getting into spoiler territory. So please feel free to click out if you don't want anything to get ruined for you. But keep our three points in mind. Now, if you don't care, or you've already seen the film, here are some of our thoughts. The Turning's opening scene implies a plot-based film. We don't open with the main character, Kate, going through something. Instead, we are told the story of Kate's predecessor, Jessel, who is running away from the Bly Mansion. This makes us, the viewers, think, oh cool, Gotta keep this in mind for the story later. So, we are continuing to look for clues that tell us about the main story. Why are there ghosts at Bly Manor? Why are the children so weird? Why is Miles so freaking horny? What happened to the old governess? What happened to the parents? Not only do we ask these questions, but the story actually continues to feed us the answers. We know that the housekeeper has been with them for ages. We know that Miles was close with Quint. We know that Jessel ran away, and Kate even finds her journal with photographic evidence. As the story progresses, we continue to think that this is a plot-based film. That is, right until the end, when the plot is over, and the story literally turns around. It's the turning. It was then that we made the realization that this was a character-based film. We had to think about what could be real and what could be made up. After all, it was from Kate's perspective, Kate's going crazy, and it's her story. The very first thing was Kate's relationship with Miles. There are moments throughout the film between the two of them that seemed contradictory. Why was Kate's experience with Miles tainted with bad encounters? Both Flora and Mrs. Gross thought that Miles was a perfect kid. He even sincerely apologizes to her the morning after he scares her on accident in the East Wing. But because Miles doesn't clean up after himself after breakfast, bounces a ball against the wall, and doesn't want to talk to her, all of a sudden, he's a bad kid? Second, the pool scene. One night, the kids play a prank on Kate, and she ends up getting her clothes all wet. The housekeeper hears her outside and asks her what happened. Kate blames the children, but they are nowhere to be seen. Third, her phone calls. Whenever she makes a phone call to her roommate and mother, we hear both conversations. However, when there's a phone call involving the headmaster, we don't hear it. This implies the phone calls we hear are all internal, meaning Kate is talking to herself. Fourth, flashlight tag. During the innocent game of flashlight tag in the dark, spooky east wing where Flora never goes, Kate sees the ghost of Quint and blames Miles. But when she comes out of the east wing, she sees all three of them. Mrs. Gross, Flora, and Miles outside eating Pop-Tarts and drinking tea. So what is real? And what really happened? So let's start with the basics of a character-based film. 
Kate is the main character. Her relationships and internal conflict speak into the main plot of the story. Kate's mom is currently hospitalized in a care facility for her mental health, and it's clear that her mom is in no condition to socialize with anyone, and her mom doesn't really know what's happening around her. As Kate is discovering more about the house and the children, she is learning more about herself. Now we are thinking deeper about the film as a whole. So why is it called The Turning? The original source material is a book called The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, and The Turning is a wordplay off of that title. In the movie, we can see our main character Kate literally turning more and more crazy as she continues to experience the weird stuff in the house, including her encounters with the other characters, Flora, Mrs. Gross, and Miles. We are given one ending to the film where Kate takes Miles and Flora and they run away from the mansion. The plot then turns back around, we hear a clock ticking, and then we find Kate in the kitchen again, looking at her mother's paintings. This time around, we hear the kids talking about how neither of them are allowed to go into Kate's room. Hmm, interesting. At different parts of the film, we find both Miles and Flora in Kate's room on separate occasions. And then Kate says she saw Quint in the mirror, but there's nothing there. In the very last scene, we see Kate in the empty pool with her mother, and when her mom turns around, she screams, and the credits roll. This also led us to believe that The Turning is a character-based film. The final scene had nothing to do with Jessel and Quint, but everything to do with Kate and her mother. So what was Kate's internal conflict? Because of Kate's childhood, she feels obligated to help the two children. She doesn't want them to experience what she went through. She tries to parent them and conjures a complex story involving the former residents and their influence on the two children so that she can exert power over them. So that's our take on The Turning. What did you think of the film? Were there more turnings or endings? Do you agree with our opinion that this is a character-based film? Write your thoughts down below and like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for turning in.